Another fairly typical question related to projectiles is as follows. A cannonball is shot horizontally off the edge of a 20 meter cliff with a velocity of 10 meters per second. What is the ball's velocity after t seconds? Now we'll leave t general as we'll discuss the concept around this type of question no matter what t might be. First, let's consider horizontal. Well, we know that the shot was made horizontally, so the entire 10 meters per second is our v naught x. Also, we know that in the horizontal direction, there are no forces, and therefore ax is 0. So, in the horizontal direction, this question is dead easy. What's the horizontal velocity after t seconds? Well, the velocity in the horizontal direction just doesn't change. It's like saying a car is traveling at a constant 80 kilometers per hour. What's its speed after 2 seconds? Well, if the speed isn't changing, the answer would clearly be 80 kilometers per hour. After 3 seconds, well, again, 80 kilometers per hour. After 5 seconds, still 80 kilometers per hour. It's not changing. So the horizontal aspect of this question, with no forces, is super easy. Let's consider the vertical motion. In the vertical direction, the initial velocity is, well, zero. The shot was horizontal, so all of the 10 meters per second was in the horizontal direction, none in the vertical direction. So in the vertical direction, the motion of this ball is no different than if we were to simply drop the ball off the cliff. The vertical motion is totally independent of the fact that it was shot at 10 meters per second horizontally. It could have been 100 meters per second. Who cares? In a vertical direction, its motion still looks like a cannonball simply dropped off the edge of a cliff. So whether dropped or shot, we know that we have the force of gravity pulling this cannonball towards the Earth, causing an acceleration, Ay, of minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So in the vertical direction, the cannonball starts at a velocity equal zero and gets faster and faster. Thus, we need an equation to solve for the vertical velocity at any particular time, t. From our equations, and considering our list of knowns and unknowns, we can pick this one. We know v naught y, we know a y, and we would be given our t. And we would be able to determine our current velocity at this given time. Exactly what we need. In order to visualize where we're going next with this problem, let's make some vector diagrams at a couple of times here. Let's start with time equals zero. So this dot demonstrates an instant in time when the cannonball is just leaving the cannon. And we froze time here to see what's happening at this exact instant. So at time equals zero, our horizontal velocity would be 10 meters per second. Remember, it's always 10 meters per second. And what about the vertical velocity? Well, at time equals zero, the vertical velocity is also zero. This is an example where there is an acceleration, minus 9.8 meters per second squared, but the velocity is zero. It's in the process of starting to increase velocity. In a fraction of a second, it'll have velocity. You could say the process of changing velocity has just now begun, and at this very instant, it's changing from zero to something. So what would our resultant velocity look like at this point? Recall that resultant velocity is the total velocity. So we add the vectors. And we need to add the vector components and it looks like this. Horizontal is 10 meters per second to the right and the vertical is zero. And therefore the resultant velocity would simply be 10 meters per second to the right. Next, let's freeze time when t equals 1 second. Again, let's draw our horizontal and vertical vectors here. So at time equals 1 second, our horizontal velocity would be 
10 meters per second. Again, remember, it's always 10 meters per second until it hits the ground. And vertically, well, this time it's definitely not zero. It started moving. Again, just like a cannonball dropped off the edge of the cliff, we know it'll be going pretty fast in the vertical direction by now. We could use our equation, or we could just do it in our head. Acceleration at minus 9.8 meters per second squared means that we get 9.8 meters per second faster after each second. So after one second, we'd be going 9.8 meters per second downwards. And we can draw that vector arrow in. Remember that in the original question, we were asked for the ball's velocity after a certain time. When a question asks for velocity in a question, what velocity is it meaning? The horizontal velocity? Nope. If it wanted horizontal velocity, it would have specified that. Does it want the vertical velocity? Well, it took some work to get the vertical velocity, so that might be a good question, but that's not this question. If we wanted vertical velocity, it would have said vertical velocity or what's the vertical component of the ball's velocity. In this case, it simply says velocity, and that means the total velocity or the resultant velocity. So let's draw in the resultant here and solve for it. We'd use Pythagorean theorem to solve for it, and we also have to remember to determine the direction, as velocity is a vector quantity, and remember that means magnitude and direction. So a little bit of trig, and we have our direction. So the answer to our question, what is the velocity of the ball after one second, would look like this. Note that we have both magnitude and direction in our final answer. In this tutorial, we considered another fairly typical projectile problem. That is, what is the velocity of a projectile after a certain amount of time of being in the air? To solve this, we consider both components, horizontal and vertical, separately. Because there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, the velocity will be the same for the entire trip. So that's nice and simple. In the vertical direction, the acceleration due to gravity means that the velocity is always changing. So we need to calculate it for any given point in time. The most common mistake made when doing these types of questions is that students get busy and forget the original question asked for velocity. Not horizontal velocity, not vertical velocity, just velocity. Which means that you haven't answered the question until you determine the total velocity, or the resultant velocity. Thus, don't forget to combine the components at the end to determine your final answer. The second most common mistake with these questions is that students forget to include the direction. Remember that velocity is a vector quantity, which means that it has both magnitude and direction. Therefore, when presenting an answer to a question which asks for velocity, make sure that you remember to supply both magnitude and direction.